Giotto's frescoes are a gateway to understanding Assisi and St. Francis's life of love and forgiveness. Monsignor Verdon, foremost scholar in Italian art, provided some amazing contexts and insights that helped our appreciation of Giotto's frescoes earlier this year. Gli affreschi di Giotto sono una porta alla comprensione della vita di amore e di perdono di San Francesco e della sua città, Assisi. All'inizio di quest'anno, Monsignor Verdon, illustre storico dell'arte, ci ha offerto alcune chiavi di lettura e riflessioni su questi tesori custoditi nella Basilica Superiore di San Francesco. Francis, as a boy, uh, undergoes his conversion experience in the course of a war between Assisi and the neighboring town of Perugia. Uh, so, uh, get beyond the uh, immediate impression uh, of uh, some utopian uh, situation uh, to a world uh, that really called for uh, reconciliation and pardon and peace. One of the frescoes you'll see in the church uh, and the whole cycle uh, is attributed to Giotto, uh, would have been painted in the early 1290s. Uh, one of the frescoes, one of the moments in Francis' life chosen by the order uh, to be put into fresco, uh, is a classic uh, medieval Italian uh, situation of uh, civil unrest. Francis and uh, one of his uh, friars uh, have expelled uh, a series of demons uh, and the original Franciscan sources written shortly after Francis' death make very clear that when they speak of Francis uh, casting the demons out of Arezzo, they're talking about uh, the demons uh, of factional strife, uh, of profound hatred uh, of uh, one class of people and another class of people, they're the demons, uh, punctually fleeing uh, the town of Arezzo. Here, in a detail, two doors of the city show you uh, people of different social classes. That was usually part of the problem. In the door at your left, you have a well-dressed burger, uh, a member of the uh, new uh, merchant class. Uh, in the door at your right, you have uh, a farmer. Uh, part of the social strife had to do with a conflict between uh, classes. Uh, and had a lot to do with the new wealth uh, that uh, the development of industry in the uh, 11 and 1200s, uh, in Italy in particular, uh, had brought about. What's interesting is that Bonaventure insists that Francis himself did not cast the demons out. He sent one of his friars. The man that you see standing there is a certain uh, brother Sylvester, who we're told was as, uh, as good as a dove, uh, peaceful, uh, kind of typically Franciscan, figure whom Francis uh, tells to go and stand beneath the walls of Arezzo and harangue the people of that city, uh, accusing them of, of their sins and inviting them to uh, overcome their sins, to uh, convert, to be transformed, to make peace. Francis remains in a neighboring village. Uh, all of the sources emphasize that he achieves his goal without ever himself going to Arezzo until peace has been established. Francis uh, is the one who uh, asks God for uh, the peace that he understands is the only possible solution to the problems of this city. Peace has to be desired. Uh, peace which is costly uh, cannot simply be a, a, a vague uh, and pleasant uh, thought. Uh, Francis himself uh, would have understood uh, controversy, would have understood strife because as one of the early scenes in the Fresco Cycle, uh, he had lived for several years in a situation of conflict with his father. His father was a wealthy merchant, Piero di Pietro di Bernardone. The moment when Francis, who has uh, understood that he has to live only for the values uh, that uh, define his life, uh, also realizes he has to strip himself uh, of other values, uh, of the values that his father has imposed upon him, the Arabism, uh, the uh, ambition to be a successful and wealthy merchant that his father must have communicated. And Francis symbolizes this by stripping himself of the clothes he has had from his father. Uh, he uh, is shown here doing this in the uh, public piazza in uh, Assisi, 
uh, Francis is the uh, nearly new young man at your right. In front of Francis in bilious yellow is his father, holding Francis' breeches and his underwear that the young man has stripped off. Francis himself is looking up toward, with his hands joined, is praying toward God, who in typical earlier medieval fashion is not shown as a bearded old man, but simply as a hand emerging from heaven. Uh, the idea of an old one, early Christian idea, being that you can't visualize God. And that really is the meaning of the story that Francis uh, says uh, in the uh, early biographies, uh, when I pray, I don't feel I'm fully sincere because I say, Our Father, Christian prayer, but uh, I really still depend too much for my earthly father. And so when I pray, I have to feel that uh, the Our Father in heaven is my only real father. Uh, so there's this youthful uh, and uh, in many ways very difficult uh, will to separate himself uh, from his earthly father, who uh, in his view was not a particularly exemplary uh, individual. Francis uh, is given to prayer. In prayer he is looking for guidance. He's still a very young man in the early frescoes. He needs to know what he should do. And one day he's uh, praying and hears a voice. And the voice tells him to rebuild uh, his church understands it's Christ. Uh, he takes the message literally, gets bricks and mortar, uh, and starts to rebuild the church. He doesn't realize yet it has to do with a uh, uh, revitalizing of the sensitivity of the institution uh, that will bring it back to a clearer sense of the real values it is meant to uphold. Uh, Francis here, though, is praying before a crucifix. For Francis, the exemplary figure is Christ, and the supreme exemplary moment is Christ's stripping of himself of not his clothes, but his glory as the Son of God, uh, accepting uh, the death of a common criminal on the cross. Uh, and so uh, the idea that, that Francis himself has this exemplar, uh, this uh, ultimate horizon of value, uh, which is the crucified Christ, uh, is really one of the great themes uh, in the frescoes, in the basilica, in Assisi, in uh, all uh, that relates to uh, Francis and Franciscanism. One of the culminating scenes in the cycle is the moment uh, much later in his life, Francis was retreated to pray, to fast, to think, and from the figure of Christ that he sees, and I'll show you the whole fresco in a moment, uh, rays of light penetrate Francis' hands, feet, and side, and he receives the stigmata, he receives the same wounds uh, that Christ had on the cross. Christ appears to him, as the fresco shows you, as a kind of, of seraph, uh, a many-winged, uh, six-winged uh, angel. Now, I just spoke of Francis' identification with the crucified Christ. Uh, here, uh, we have to immediately say uh, that the uh, uh, church itself, uh, as you see it, is incomplete because an important element of the building has been missing for centuries. And it is an element that you don't see here, uh, that you do see in one of the frescoes, uh, fresco depicting the uh, funeral of St. Francis, where above uh, the catapult, the body of Francis, the assembled friars and citizens, you see a wood beam supported by these two brackets at right and left. And on that wood beam, you have a number of images uh, uh, cantilevered forward. There's a painting of Mary and the Child. There's a cutout uh, uh, painting of uh, St. Michael the Archangel there at your right. And in the center, the most important image, the image set directly above the uh, body of Francis, who died with the wounds of Christ's passion in his hands and feet, uh, you have the cross. In the past, uh, in the original arrangement, your whole visit to the church was meant to be uh, under the figure of the crucified Christ. The experience of the frescoes and the pilgrimage to venerate Francis' body would have been interwoven with this strong central visual emphasis on the cross, which was enlivened by the actual celebration in which Catholics believe uh, Christ's uh, crucified body and the blood he shed on the cross are really present. Uh, these are cultural realities that deeply condition the way in which uh, the images are seen and would have made those images uh, exceedingly 
uh, vital, exceedingly communicative uh, for the pilgrims uh, who came to Assisi. It is a pilgrimage church. The visitor was meant to easily associate the life of Francis with the life of Christ. Uh, Francis' own contemporaries called him uh, another Christ, alter Christus. So the connections I'm trying to suggest to you uh, of the visual emphasis on the suffering Christ, the sacramental uh, emphasis in the uh, Eucharist, the bread and wine, uh, in which Catholics uh, believe his body and blood to be truly present, and the body of Francis with the wounds of Christ's passion. That uh, is uh, absolutely central to the whole experience. Uh, I think the Fetzer Institute wants to project its gaze forward from an exemplary figure like Francis to uh, other uh, people, uh, other situations, other possibilities. We'll have the opportunity to share and reflect as a group this September in Assisi. Please join us. Ciao! Dal 19 al 23 settembre avremo l'opportunità di ritrovarci insieme ad Assisi in occasione dell'incontro internazionale dal titolo Il pellegrinaggio dell'amore e del perdono. Arrivederci ad Assisi!